Hello YouTube. Thank you for watching this far into the video. This is the point where I wanted to do a little explanation on what you just heard with debug enabled. So what you're seeing up here is a spline follower. Uh, not too difficult to set up. Uh, I'll be going into how to set this all up uh, in a little bit. Uh, at each spline point I've set an emitter to spawn randomly uh, within a range of spline points. As you can see, it just follows along, and it's pretty, pretty great. Uh, over here, we have another follower that I made where an emitter follows the player's position within a volume, and it stays within that volume, so I can set it to any shape or distance I, I want to have it follow. Before I get too far, I, uh, I have another follower over here, and I just uh, I liked how you can use it in multiple ways. So it doesn't always have to be something on the horizontal axis. You can use it above you, below you, next to you. It's it's quite great. And then I have one more in here. This one I actually have a source bus being sent to it. Uh, with some effects to give an effect of reverberation within this space. So what I'm doing to attenuate the volume when I'm inside and outside the geometry here is actually something new and experimental that Unreal is rolling out slowly. It's called the Audio Gameplay Volumes. Uh, this was a solution that seemed to work pretty well um, for putting audio volumes in blueprints, which is very new and exciting. Uh, it's been something that has been not really doable in Unreal, since audio volumes have always been box brushes, and you can't really adjust the size of a box brush within a blueprint. Uh, but this allows you to use standard geometry like a box or a cone or a capsule to uh, set the bounds of your box. In this case, I think I'm using a capsule here to, to match the geometry. And uh, yeah, it allows for additional reverb to be had. It's more noticeable over, over here because I'm not using a source bus to play audio to that emitter or all this reverb you're hearing is being sent from the sound's attenuation into this reverb zone. And it is spatial. This is very exciting. I, this is my first time using it. This is my first experiment with it. And I think it will uh, warrant another video. Uh, one that I can go more into how it works and how to set it up. But for now, this is, yeah, my uh, follower level with gameplay audio or audio gameplay volumes. All right, now for the fun part, looking into the blueprints and how this all works. So I'll start with the uh, audio volume emitter, the one that follows you within a box or whatever you want to use. Uh, I'm using overlap to trigger it, uh, making sure it's the first person. And then I'm setting a timer to update at 0 0.01. Um, to update the emitter location within that box. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm getting the first person character. I'm using the closest point on the collision of that uh, box. Then I'm using that closest point to set the emitter location. I'm getting the emitter uh, vector just to draw the debug, which is inspired from a video oops, uh, that I'll link below. Uh, basically, it it just grabs the center, the radius, then the attenuation radius, draws the vector location, and then it gets a line from the player to the center of the emitter debug. Um, I'm getting the attenuation radius by just grabbing the uh, settings from the audio emitter and then setting it there. Now the audio gameplay volume emitter follower is using the same setup for the emitter follower, 
but it has all the properties and components plugins for the audio gameplay volume. Um, I'm using a primitive proxy to trigger the the volume or to set the the bounds of the volume. Um, I'm using attenuation inside and out, but yeah, these are all just default components uh, settings. Um, and I'm using some reverb. I set all these to variables here and then expose them. So then I can use it for any geometry that I place this blueprint in. Now, if this was like a blueprint for a house or some sort of structure, this is where it'd be great because you can set these up to match whatever that blueprint's geometry is. And then when that blueprint gets instanced out into the level, you'll always have the audio gameplay volume set up to work with that. So it, it really works on scale. That's what's so amazing about this um, is, is you can really set unique settings for certain floors or buildings. And then when those buildings get placed in the world, boom, you have your gameplay volume just there. Saves you a lot of time. Uh, I definitely am excited to see where this goes. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to be making another video on how to set this all up um, and really dive deep into this uh, because right now this is, as I said, my first time setting this all up and you know, I want to make sure I, I do it right. Um, but so far it works great. So how the spline follower spline point audio emitter spawner works is essentially set up very similar to the audio volume emitter. Um, but the, the magic happens within these little macros here. First, I am using a timer to spawn the emitter and the sparks at the same time and location. Um, I'm using a delay just to randomize it, um, but how it finds the spline points and spawns them there is by getting an index of every single one from the construction script, um, and then gets uh, that amount uh, and then subtracts it from itself to then choose one of the values. So it could say, hey, I have 10 spline points. So I am now just gonna say, okay, I'm nine. So then it's gonna place it at one uh, because it looks at the difference between um, the, the two, the value that it chooses randomly and the value of how many spline points there are. So it could be 10 out of 10. So it places it at zero, which is the first one. So it, it gives it some nice randomization. Um, so then I'm, getting that location of that spline point, setting it, um, and then I'm using that set location to then spawn uh, the Niagara Sparks, uh, and then I am spawning an audio emitter at that same location at that same time. So it works pretty well. Um, then how the follower works uh, is inspired again from many tutorials. Um, Basically, I'm getting the player's location lo uh, closest to the world location along the spline. Uh, and then I am using an interpolation of the vectors between the audio emitter and the world location of the player um, to smoothly move between those points. Um, I, I set it to, I think, point one. Um, so it would move quickly but smoothly between the locations that the audio emitter and is being played at and then the updated position to where the player is. Um, and then I'm setting that just for debugging it. Well, that should cover how these followers work. Thank you for sticking through and watching this video. Feel free to leave any comments with suggestions or feedback or ideas. I appreciate them all. And I look forward to sharing with you all what I make next.